What's wrong? What do you mean? You're looking at me funny. Uh, it's just, why is it taking Nine. forever to connect? Goddamn thing. Um, part of that might be that my computer is kind of a dinosaur and I will be replacing it soon. Because it's a night and I don't like it. I want you to know, Tara, you are my friend. I love you very much, which is why I'm, I, I am doing everything in my power to refrain from making any comments about your choice of computer provider. Just... I mean, you want your computer? I can build your computer. Build your good computer. Build your oh, la, la. tank of a computer. The new come in pink. What? The new ones come in pink. I can build you a pink computer. I like my little, it's like super thin and it only weighs like two pounds. And the keyboard is also pink. I like what I like. Anyway. Mac is trash. Mac is crap. You know what's funny is I don't remember asking any of you. It, it, the Mac actually isn't. It's the company. The company sucks. Yeah. And my computer's problem is that it's more than five years old, which when it's a Mac means throw it away and give us more money. And I understand that that is a... <laughs> Are you there? Hello? Yes, sorry. <laughs> that was in the Mac, that was my Wi Fi. Uh, anyway, no, Max, Max are not the. That, okay. Hardware wise, especially the new ones are interesting. S Mac OS, I also, okay. To install something on Windows, you have to run an installer and then it takes half the files and throws them over there. And another half of the files go over there and it has to have this registry thing and all this. You know how you install something on a Mac? You open a folder, you drag and you drop, it, drop it. it. There it is. You want to uninstall it? Drag it. Night. Trash can. You're done. Trash. Mainly the big, yeah, it's like the biggest problems with Mac are, are the company's policies, which I've have just yeah. atrocious. And the fact that they're like, open it up and replace the video card. No, just give us more money. All right. So, uh, <laughs> oh, to continue on, um, last week, uh, the weekend. You may be familiar with the weekend. Yeah, um, he he does the uh, one of the biggest songs like for, for freaking ever. Um, he was at Comic Con when I worked at one year, and uh, let's just say he's low maintenance. <laughs> well, um, last week he announced on the twitters. <laughs> Uh, let me drag it over here and then put it up on the screen so everybody can see. He announced uh, for his new tour, the the After Hours tour, which is uh, or yeah, the After Hours Till Dawn tour. Um, he is partnering with uh, with Binance. Now, now, who is Binance? Why it's one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges on the planet. Oh no! Oh yes. No. But Tara, it, it wouldn't be our show if it didn't get better. Um, last week, so this is this is how it started, and now let's look at uh, how it's going. Um, U.S. probes Binance over token that is now the world's fifth largest. SEC investigates whether. BNB was the security. So they're looking at it for securities fraud. And this is this is how it's going. Um 
that's not all. Two stories dropped about the same Nine. day. Reuters did a uh, full investigation uh, how Binance became a hub for hackers, fraudsters, and drug traffickers. It's pretty much exposing how they facilitated over two, almost two and a half billion in money laundering. Oh. Good luck with that tour. Good luck with Guy. the tour. You, you picked a hell of a partner. Let's go on, Abel. What the fuck? Yeah. The, the entire fuck, man. See, maybe, like, isn't the whole theme of the new album kind of like a weird dystopia? No, it's actually, well, yeah, but it's also a whole bunch of uh, issues with death, dying, and aging. And... Oh. I, guess I was going to say, maybe it was, like, on purpose. Yeah. Uh, he should just save his tears. All right. Um. Now that that's out of the way, and I made my old man joke, let's uh, let's get the intro going because wowsy woozy, we have yet another week of what the fuck is wrong with you? Let's crank that up. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, going out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Um, and it's Pride Month now. We are in June. So uh it's Pride Month, which means the brands are out. Yeah. There, there is a there's a meme, and I don't, you probably don't you just don't play Fallout, you don't understand it, but uh there's a meme from Fallout 4 that uh when, when you do certain things in the game make certain choices some of your companions like it some of them don't um and there's there's a meme based around that that if you do something that all of your it's everyone disliked that all of your companions hated that decision and is that what that's from that's what that's from yes everyone disliked oh. that. that's what that's from. It's like i've seen the meme i didn't know what it was from it's it's a fallout thing well, um, well, I learned a thing today. That's that's pretty much the the essence of of brands during Pride Month. They will make a decision that the the transphobes, homophobes, all of those fucking phobes fucking hate, and also the, the everyone who is actually on LGBT, they also hate it too. And this <laughs> one, hmm? like you know, it was like the Walmart Juneteenth ice cream. Like all yeah. you had to do is ask one black person, but you didn't. They have Pride ice cream too. But no, this one, this one is a weird brand because it's the fucking Marines. U.S. Marines honor Pride Month with rainbow bullets. Met with no. backlash. Yeah, this, this greeted people. Um, it's a riff on which to, to start off with. But let's begin at the, at the bottom floor because this has got layers. Um, this is a riff on the cover to full metal jacket. I don't know if you've ever seen the, uh, well, not the cover, but the, uh, the poster. poster. Yeah. Movie poster. Um, let me see if I can bring it up on screen. So you can compare that. That is the, the first issue here. Um, because, uh, if, if you may or not be familiar with uh, full metal jacket, it is a film about the Vietnam War, and it's also about uh, the the horror of the entire thing. And you see the, the image there. It says "Born to Kill" with with all the the the, uh, the bullets and what it, it, it's a it's a it's a treatise on the futility of war and the horrors of it. And it's it's pretty much like you know maybe the military isn't so great. So here's the military you know, proud born to proud to serve. And the bullets are, are rainbow colored. Now, um, there are levels here. I mean, bullets, bullets, bullets. Because each color, and then correct me if I'm wrong with this, but each color of the rainbow flag for LGBTQIA, um, each one is supposed to re represent one of those, <laughs> you know. Lesbian, gay, but it's each color is supposed to represent. I don't know because there's all different flags now, so I will admit yeah, I but, don't know. Well, I think that was initially the idea was there. Um, yeah. 
So here they are. Each bullet is a different color, which is that's kind of awesome. A little bit of a threat. Yeah, that's quite literally. We've got a bullet with your name on it. Um. Even if it like, what made you think? Mm. <laughs> Like, we're only 20 years out of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, right? Right. So well, I understand why you want to pointedly thank these particular service people for their service. Fine. And, the, and, and the trans, the ban, which was idiotic. Right. But, okay. but with bullets? With bullets. You what? couldn't, nobody, I mean... This is probably just as bad an idea, but at least rainbow camo wouldn't have felt violent. Yeah. Well, I mean, or maybe, just... maybe, maybe you don't do any of that maybe. fucking war imagery and you just put the flag in the ad. Or, when in doubt, shut the fuck up. I mean, just, 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 just shut the fuck up. I mean, I can see wanting to thank yeah. those service people. You got, yeah. It's remarkable. You gotta, you gotta not. If you looked at the replies, this. if you looked at the replies on Twitter, everyone fucking hated it. Everyone, the people who just everyone, you you congratulations, you have pissed off the world equally. And truly, that's what that's what equality is all about: making everybody mad at the same thing. That um. I think the only brand I saw get it right this year was that Austrian Burger King ad. Uh, getting it right is is that's a bit of a I okay. Uh, well, people bring, seem to like out. it. It was funny. It was actually funny, and I have not seen people angry at it. Like people seem to think that they understood the assignment. Um, the the, the uh yeah uh if if you did not see this. Um, here is the, the pride whopper. Um, see if you, you, you can figure out, give it a minute, get, give it a minute. There you go. Soak it in. I like it. <laughs> I think that was well done. I think that's funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that, that is the, uh, yeah. Well, let's move along because we have more horrible things to talk about. I okay. I both do and do not get the whole fooling around in a moving vehicle. I know whiplash total. We're, we're jumping to it. I do and do not get it. Like throwing popcorn at each other, no. or like no. okay. Not not popcorn, Tara. Um, well, there's fooling around and there's fooling around, and they're both they it means both things. So I was just trying to clarify. Um, yeah, I I I get it, and yet I don't get it because I get it on the one hand, it's fucking, but on the other hand, it, it's, it's dark. Death. It's death. I I don't. I'm not a fan of death. I because you know. If you fool around in a car, it's, it's, it's going to end up death. Movie theater. What? You said movie theater. No, I said in a car. Moving vehicle. Oh, okay. I heard movie theater, and I'm like, why would you die? Do they kill you now? Alamo Draft House doesn't fuck around. No, moving, Sorry. Mo moving vehicle. Moving vehicle. Okay, yes. That, that is not smart and very unsafe. Correct. This this is one of those um, be prepared to cross your legs because this might make some of you a bit uncomfortable. Woman performing oral sex on driver causes vehicle to crash into FedEx truck. But that's just the beginning. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, and it's Florida, of course. Two people inside an SUV were discovered naked after a crash between the vehicle and a FedEx truck Thursday. And it's what was going on inside that may have caused the collision. So let's start off at the beginning. 
you're you're driving the car naked. You're both everyone's naked in the car. I don't drive barefoot. Right. I don't damn drive barefoot. And yet naked. No. Do you not eat in your car? Because I eat in my car a lot. I shouldn't, but and I don't want any of that anywhere near the candy shop. <laughs> I don't want last week's French fries in the same neighborhood. At the time of the crash, the woman inside the SUV was performing oral sex with the male driver. Um, crash happened at a North Ocean Boulevard. There were two people inside the FedEx truck with the injuries were minor. The driver of the SUV sustained injuries to his private area due to what was going on at the time of the crash. Yeah. Like injuries or he doesn't have it anymore. I I'm pretty more I'm pretty sure that would be that would be a bigger story if it Okay. But even still you got some You've got some marks now. Did you hear urban legend about the guy that lost a hand in a car accident? Was it a hook hand one or? Oh, he, uh, he, he was using it on the girlfriend and uh, he had it under the seatbelt. So when they got in the accident, his hand got severed and was found still there. Did you have that urban legend? My town had that urban legend. No one could ever tell you who it was, who it happened to, but they all know a guy who knew the guy. Okay. I guess that's a no. That, that, okay. Those are th those are scars that that. Well, let's say that's a conversation starter. In certain circumstances, <laughs> you want to know how I got Think these about scars. Yeah. <laughs> the ER visit. Like, they've heard it all in the ER. They're they not have. impressed with they you, have. but having to go in there and be like, so, what happened? <laughs> not nothing. Been a car accident. Uh, mm -hmm. His stick shift needs some repair. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Don't, don't, don't fuck around while the car is moving. Come on. Yeah. If you need to concentrate. Next one is, this was poor. This was, it seemed like a good idea at the time, I'm sure. Uh, much like fooling around in the car. But much, much like. Um, it's. Tugboat crew rescues man drifting on makeshift raft toward Bonneville Dam. Wait till you hear this one. This is from Portland. A man drifting down the Columbia River on a makeshift raft was rescued by tugboat crews just minutes after he would have been swept into the Bonneville Dam. Uh, Skamania. Uh, I, I, it can't be Skamania. It's, it's spelled Skamania. <laughs> that, that just... Maybe there's your problem. Sheriff's you office. name your town Scania. <laughs> You're asking for trouble. Sheriff's office identified the man as the 43 year old <laughs> Randall Betha, who was uh, hitchhiking from Spokane after Betha was tired from hitchhiking. He made a raft out of wood and rope and began traveling the Columbia River near Hood River Bridge. So no one was stopping to pick your ass up. And the walk is kind of hard. So you think to yourself, I will cobble together a vehicle from twigs and twine. But the river was too deep to fjord. <laughs> um, they conducted a five hour search by boat. They were told by the Foss Maritime Tug they found Betha. Near the uh, Columbia River Dam, Betha called 911, reporting he was stuck in the middle of the channel and couldn't make it to shore. 
Feather told Dispatch he did not have a life vest and did not know how to swim. Why would you why would you make yourself a little Huck Finn raft <laughs> if you don't know how to swim? <laughs> The Oregon Trail is not a LARP. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The river is too deep to fjord, and you probably didn't spend any money on caulk because you blew it all on bullets. Because there was always that asshole in the group. <laughs> Dude, just... How was this a... I have never been in a situation where I've I've had I've had my car break down the side of the road. I've had to walk away. There's nothing quite like I, I, I can't even imagine hitchhiking because there's nothing quite like having to walk from mile marker to mile marker to hope you get to the yeah. line where the gas station is. Yeah. And you're all like, well, why would you do that? Well, m my babies, we did not always have the phone in your pocket. That that was not always an option. We we did not have to be a attached to the ground. Yeah, we we did not communicate with each other at all times in all places. I know it's strange, but it's true. You used to be at times unreachable. <gasps> I never, I I never was like walking the highway and thought to myself, you know what? I should just build myself a boat. <gasps> I have problems craft. I'm not the best of crafters when, when, when building things from scratch without computer assistance. I'm not very good at it. I would not the assistance of say a hammer and nails. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat competent and even I wouldn't trust my handiwork on a moment's notice to build a boat. This is like scrapyard challenge or some shit. Only if you this fail, you die. This is a very Portland thing to do. It is, yeah. It it feels like. It. And then to call, can you just some nine one one call nine one one? What's your emergency? I built a boat, bad. Swim. <sighs> Next up, North Carolina. Uh, you remember last week we had the, the person who pied the Mona Lisa cream pie. They yeah. gave the Mona Lisa a cream pie. Everyone don't Google that. Google it. Um, part of that story was the, the way they got through security into the Louvre was, uh, by you faking the use of a wheelchair. And that was pretty shitty. Well, it, it, it did not work this time. Thankfully, from Atlanta, agents find 23 pounds of cocaine in North Carolina passenger's wheelchair. 23-year-old man was arrested at the airport in Charlotte after agents found more than 23 pounds of cocaine stashed inside the wheelchair he was using. According to Customs Border Patrol, Alexander Lopez Morel was returning to the U.S. from the Dominican Republic on Tuesday when officers found packages of a white powdery substance concealed in the electric wheelchair. Four packages contained over 23 pounds, estimated street value of $378,000. All right, can we pause there? Who does the estimated street value for drugs? Who's, who's sitting around? Yeah, I don't know. How do you determine that? Is, and is, is that the same everywhere? Is it? Yeah, it's like, what's the exchange rate? Yeah. Who, who, is, is there like an office you could call that you, <laughs> to price your drugs? Or like a Kelly Blue Book All for the, cocaine? Yeah. Um, so, it, I just... It, Do they x-ray wheelchairs? Well, no, nah, I don't know. But I do know they're a bit more strict about stuff coming through uh, international borders than they are just, you know, if you're hopping yeah. on a plane between states. I, I don't know. The audaciousness of it is pretty hilarious. They thought, this is foolproof, my man. It's one of those, those, those uh, plans you come up with while on cocaine. 
because you think and it so- seems like a good idea while you're on cocaine i have never experienced cocaine but i have actually been in the presence of people who were on cocaine and you come to understand that how they think shit's the best thing in the world and you're sitting there going what but they're very the guys talking about the drug videos that you watch in middle school and they're like, you're going to think you had a genius idea. And really, you just wrote down cheese. Really, you wrote down, put the cocaine in the wheelchair, brah. Well, I, I, they, they thought, you know, they were going through like, man, we are so cool. We've got the best idea. His fucking genius. Fucking genius. And I, I bet you that the reason they found them was they were probably acting like they were on fucking cocaine. There is this weird phenomenon. And I don't care what drug it is, whether, whether you're drunk, whether you're high, whether you're fucking on meth. And what was that song? I forget who, who partnered did the song called Everybody Knows You're High, um, where you try desperately to, to, to participate in society as though you are not fucking blitzed out of your fucking mind. Suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Like you, you, you're pretty sure everybody knows. You're like, I don't. No, I'm, I'm cool. I, I am, I am Mister Sober, the most sober person you know. Why are you talking? Like, I am sober. This is how sober talk. That's kind of. How, it's not the idea. The idea could have potentially worked. I'm pretty sure they just they gave the shit away. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they, they're like, "Are you fine, sir?" No, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's my wheelchair. It's my wheelchair. I've had this wheelchair my whole life. I'm great. I like, I like the yeah. wheelchair. It's, it's good. Do you like the color? I like the color. I, I thought I got the color. I got this. You know, I, I had a choice between this or black. I thought I'd go with the beige, not the black. But you, thought, you like the color? I like it. How are you doing? Do you like the job? It's a good job. You like the job? Uh, how, how much do they pay? What, what, what do you What do you do for uh, What do you do for a break? Do, you, do they have a little place to go for a break? Do you, do you... It's his. Did you tell him it's your wheelchair, Randy? He's got a condition. <laughs> his wheelchair. Did you tell him? Uh, well, speaking of uh, things you think are a good idea while you're drunk, um, I I don't have a segue for this. It's that audacious. Holy fuck. Uh... Drunk driver crashes, heads straight to the dealership to sell damaged car with missing tire. (laughs) Chutzpah. Evansville, Indiana. Police say they arrested a driver who was 3.5 times the legal alcohol limit after at least five people called 911. Witnesses say reported seeing a SUV hit the median the Lloyd Expressway near Main Street. They saw the, the, the crash caused a flat tire and the car to smoke, but the driver kept going. Other callers say the driver's all over the road and now missing a front tire. They say he eventually stopped at a car dealership and appeared, quote, super drunk. Police told the police the driver, 30-year-old Jordan Mattingly, was trying to sell his SUV. Police say he had swelling and scratches as if he'd just been in a crash. They say he smelled of alcohol and almost fell several times. Um, inside the SUV, they found four loco cans and a, ca- a can of white claw. <laughs> loco? I didn't know that shit still existed. I thought we as a society decided that was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. I I just well the car's no good no more so maybe somebody else will want it. You you Fuck, you sold me a car, is it a tire? <laughs> Rip me off, man. Look, all I know is when a left chair had all the tires and now it doesn't, where did the tire go? It fell off. You you put did you give me I money 
Now imagine being the fucking sales associate who works on commission and is wasting your time with this asshole. Yeah, th- this walks into the shop and you're like, oh, fuck. Well, I guess I'm just working for free today. <laughs> They promptly go over, and and by the time he's gone, all the free coffee is, too. Yeah. Look at the mugshot. Oh, let's find it. Yeah, He's still fucked up. It it is. Where is it? Where is that fucking mugshot? Shit. Uh, Is that on the video? It's it's the thumbnail on the video. Oh, crap. It does does the autoplay for it. Let me see if I find a copy. Sorry. It's a man who has no idea where he is. Uh, where's Matt? Uh... Jordan Manning. Let's get like this is this is the the problem here. I'm googling his name. All right. The first thing that's going to come up under images when I googled his yep, there it is. The very first thing that came up. If Jordan So now forever Whenever someone Googles his name, that's going to be the first image. And uh, I don't know if men do this, but women do this. If you're in the online dating scene, you Google the guy. Because you specifically want to look for things like mug shots. Because 50% of dating for women is trying not to wind up on an episode of Forensic Files. So as soon as you have a name, you're Googling that name to make sure that you're not just... going out with the next Ted Bundy. So the good luck is... with that, Jordan. The internet is forever. All right. Um, last one for this week. <sighs> dudes. All right, dudes, dudes, listen to me, my dudes. You have got to come up with better ways to handle your emotions. I I know we 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 are not taught very well in America. If if you if you're uh, identify as male, you're a dude. We are not taught from a young age how to contend with our emotions very well. But this no. this might be probably one of the if not the most expensive. One of the mis- most historically significant tantrums by a man in the 21st century. A high bar. Five million in ancient art at Dallas Museum destroyed by man, quote, mad at his girl. A 21-year-old man who the police say broke into the Dallas Museum of Arts destroyed five million dollars in ancient artifacts reportedly say he did it because he was quote mad at his girl savage did she like work there no this happened before 10 p.m wednesday when the spokeswoman from the museum said someone quote forcibly entered police later identified the suspect as brian hernandez who was taken into custody shortly after leaving the scene he has been charged with criminal mischief Uh, probably more to follow that's it Probably more to follow. Police say he evaded security guards at the museum, smashed glass casings, destroyed ancient Greek items. At least one of them was from 450 BC. The Dallas Museum of Art is still open to the public, but certain parts are closed due to damage. Um, court documents state the surveillance cameras caught a man with, quote, a metal chair in his hand at the door. Dispatchers told investigators the person admitted he broke in. It was someone who seemed to be angry, and his purpose was to get his anger exercised by smashing anything they could find of glass. Responding security guard told police he asked Hernandez why he broke, and uh, Hernandez's alleged response was that he was mad at his girl, so he broke in and started destroying property. Most expensive items were a 6th century Greek vase and a red pixis, red figure pixis. Pixis? Do you know that term? I don't know. I'm... Uh... Anyway, it no. dates back to uh, 450 BC. Um, he went through other spaces. Is, is your girlfriend Greek? Um, Artega said the alleged girl Hernandez was mad at is not an employee or associated with the museum. 
We don't have any connection that we know of or that person related to the Dallas Museum of Art. So. You're just you're in a mood. You're angry. Life's not going your way. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And the way you deal with this. Is you destroy priceless relics in the name of. I'm mad at my girl. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, okay? There, there are some men, hashtag not all men, who do things like this. And then they claim that they just lost control. And the thing is, we all know that you're full of shit. Mm. Because we all know that in a blackout, berserker rage state, you do not drive to a museum. Mm get a chair, break in, walk through some rooms and don't touch anything, and then walk into a particular room and break, but you're not making that many decisions. Like, if you're in a blind rage, you break your own shit, maybe. Mm. So, like... I never have, though. Yeah, they never... They, like, that's... It never happens. I haven't, so I haven't ever done a smashing thing. Myself. I can't remember if I've ever... I don't think I've done a smashy thing in my life. I have. I'm a thrower. <laughs> so I've, I've had, like, the berserker rage. I tend to break my own shit. Well, I think it's a side effect of the fact of, that I'm... I, I, I spent most of my 20s very broke, and whatever I had was very, very important. Oh, same. My, my cordless phone through all four years of college, when you shook it, it rattled. Because when I got mad, you would throw my phone at the wall. I don't know why it still worked, but it rattled. <laughs> Couldn't afford a new one, so I just used the rattle phone. Uh... I didn't say I was smart. But, you know, when you're like, oh, I just, I just lost control, and then got in my car and drove to the art museum and broke it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Like, like this, you have quite literally changed the course of history. Yeah. Holy shit, man. BC. Yeah, to this guy's girlfriend, Ron. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, my God. Because there is crazy there that does not sleep. No. Fuck. I've I've I have had I have had bad relationships in my life. I have never had one that quite literally changed the course of history. No. I no. you know if I was if I'm his ex, I'm I'm terrified, but I'm also a little proud. Look what I did. The new Helen of Troy. <laughs> Put that in your dating profile. That's that's the first thing. We no look. one has destroyed more Greek shit over a woman since Helen of Troy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the, the first thing we learn: constructive means of con dealing with your anger. Y y Therapy is for everybody. Yeah. Just smash. Now I say that knowing that not everybody has access. But if you have access, do the therapy. Uh, if you think you don't need therapy, for God's sakes, do the therapy. We've learned that the internet is indeed forever, especially when your ass tries to smashes a car drunk and tries to sell it to the dealership while you're still drunk. Um, we've learned that if you are attempting to 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 come up with to do a cunning scheme that involves cocaine, it's probably not going to go well because no. of cocaine. Of aforementioned cocaine, yeah. Um, we've learned that if you can't afford a bus ticket, lashing together logs with vines is not a viable alternative. <laughs> Especially if you can't swim. Yeah, I just, it's gonna suck, but you gotta have to, walking, 
will quite likely get you there way more alive. Way more alive. Yeah. Um, we've learned <laughs> getting your dick sucked while driving always carries a little bit of a risk. It, it, that should lurk in the back of your mind at all times. Finally, this week we've learned Pride Month is a month where all the brands come together to piss everyone off equally. Beautiful. <laughs> we all stand together as one. And eight, cringe. And cringe. <laughs> 